Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring a Gothic Revival style house in Belleville, Illinois. This house was built in 1866 and is currently listed for $125,000. So before we go inside, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Sheila McAllister of Property Peddler Inc. for opening the doors to this listing. It's currently listed for $125,000 and you can find a link in the description with more details. Let's go check it out. As we walk inside of this house, there are some really beautiful details to just notice right off the bat. The screen door over here has a lot of really intricate frilling on it. There are also these crystal doorknobs on either side of the door. So this is not something that we see too commonly having crystal knobs both on the exterior and the interior. And above the front door is this beautiful transom and we can see that there's leaded glass on the other side. And if we look over here, we can see one of those pointed arch windows that is so iconoclastic to the Gothic Revival style. So let's go start exploring the rest of this house. Come on through here, and first we're going to come to the parlor, and we can see another one of these transoms above these double doors here. And this also has a pointed archway. And this is a theme that we're going to be seeing a lot as we kind of travel throughout this house. So entering the parlor, the first thing that really grabs us is the leaded stained glass window up here. And this is from when the house was originally built. So we can actually see some of the warping that has happened to the glass as it is sagged over time, as glass does, as it ages. So looking around this room a bit more, there is this beautiful fireplace mantle that was brought into this house by the previous owners. So this is not original to the house, but it is period accurate. And they even used old tile along the bottom here. As we keep looking around this room, there are these three symmetrically placed windows, each with their pointed rounded arches. Once again, very common with the Gothic Revival style, but very rare to find this style of house with so many pointed rounded arches. So moving out of this space, we'll pass through this door and it looks like it used to have a transom window up here, but it looks like that has been boarded over. Now we are going to walk into the dining room. And this room is really spacious. It runs the entire width of the house and even further because it has this outcropping here with this bay window to allow more light to come in. This dining room table was crafted by the previous owners who actually restored this house to its former glory and left for survivors of Hurricane Katrina who would occupy the house after them. This house was also a framery at one point, so we can see the entrance to that business over here in the bay window. We can also see, and I'm not sure if this is original or not, let me know, but we've got some really fun wallpaper patterns here that are also period accurate. There is a painted radiator over here in this corner, and there is even a little corner shelf over here. And these are just some of those fun little details that we find throughout this house. Before we go deeper into the house, let's cut back through the stair hall, and we'll notice that there's this pocket door that's kind of wedged in the wall here. So underneath the stairs right here, is the bathroom and there's a crystal doorknob as well as a skeleton key to unlock this. So that's just one of those really fun details. So let's take a peek in here. There's some old historical photographs. So let's just kind of look around. Okay, so the bathroom was beautiful. So cutting through the dining room now, we are going to go over here to the kitchen. And the kitchen looks really old. I'm just going to say that, but it has actually been updated by previous owners to have that kind of feel about it. So let's just take a moment to look around the space. I do want to walk everyone through this kitchen because it's a lot of fun. There's this old round oak stove door that's just being used as like a bread cabinet. So that's a lot of fun. Adds function while still kind of maintaining that historic charm. 
we can see that these cabinets all have chicken wire on the inside and then there are these doily frills that run here as well. Once again, just to give it kind of like that farmhouse shabby chic look. And I think it's really pulled off well in here. The cabinets down here, they have coffee beans and rice and other dry goods just kind of stored in the front. But if we open that up, we can see that's just a small glass panel to give the illusion that these are full of dry goods. So what a fun detail that is. And then there's also a porcelain sink, no cabinets here. So we could imagine hanging a piece of fabric down here to really give it that old timey feel. There's also a majestic stove over here. And of course this is still functional and you can cook amazing meals on it. And these types of appliances have been going strong for over hundred years and they're probably not going to break down anytime soon. But just in case you want something a little bit more modern, there is a double oven over here to the side. And over here is a door that runs out to the side of the house. And we can see that there's a transom window above it. But there's also this old telephone box that sits here. And this is just really fun. It doesn't look like it's still wired to function, but it's just a really neat piece to have in the house. So passing off the kitchen, we now come to another space. And you could imagine this is like a breakfast room or a butler's pantry, um, really kind of any purpose that you can think of. There is a radiator over here. There are these checkered floors, a tin ceiling, and a window that sits higher than any of the other windows that we've seen in this house so far. So it gives a little bit more privacy to this space. Coming through this space now, we enter into another room and we can see that there are exposed brick walls, there are tin ceilings, and something really interesting is there's an old cellar entrance. Now, we're not going to go down inside of this cellar today, but it's just fun to see that there's like this trap door that blends in with the painted wood floors. And interestingly enough, there's two cellars in this house, so there's another one on the exterior over here on the side yard, but they are separate spaces. So you have two completely different cellars. So we've seen the first floor. Who's ready to go upstairs? Let's go check it out. As we make our way back to the stair hall, I want to tell you all a little bit about the history here. So Charles Monk was the first owner of this house and he had it built in 1866, as I mentioned earlier. So he owned a little business on Main Street and he was actually pretty successful with it. So by 1909, he built a house for him to retire in, and that's when the house took on its second owner. So now we are back in the stair hall, and let's go see what's up here. Coming up the stairs, before we even get to the top, we noticed that overhead was this beautiful old chandelier and this really deeply encased Gothic pointed arch window that's right here. And then over here at the end of the landing, this is really special. Um, and I just, I've been so excited to show this all off to you guys. So come on over here. We can see that there is the original hardware that is on the outside of this window here. So you can imagine that this would have been opened in the spring to let in a cool summer breeze. And this is just not something that we really see on houses these days. So passing out of the vaulted ceiling area, we're now going to cut back through the stair landing and we're going to start off with the master bedroom. So the master bedroom is through here and it has this giant bay window to allow in a lot of natural light. And this is actually really spacious. So let's just take a moment to kind of look around here. Something really fun about the space that I wanna show you are these doors. So there's like this crackled finish on the doorknobs, this really old hardware, and then there's even a transom window up above the double closet. And we can take a peek inside of here. So there's actually a lot of space. We can see the really deep baseboards and the closet kind of extends into the wall on either direction here. And then off to the side of this closet is another one of these radiators and this one has been painted as well. So now we can move this way and off of the master bedroom is the master bathroom. So come on in here. So this space is absolutely massive.
So first things first, we notice that the ceiling starts to taper up and it gets really large in here. So there's a radiator over here. And then over here, there's another one of these amazing pointed arch windows. And we can see really clearly here, the old latches that would allow these individual panes to open up. So once again, that's just something that can't really be replicated today because of the intricate work that goes into it. And then over here is what is believed to have been an old dumbwaiter. So this could have brought supplies up from the first floor to the second floor. And then there's this really amazing old soap dish right here. So let's just focus on these really fun details in this room. Leaving the master bedroom, we're now going to go back out into the stair hall and we will start checking out the rest of the bedrooms. So come on out here and this, we're gonna make a whole bunch of little turns real fast. So come on through the hallway and we'll go explore this bedroom too. So this bedroom's really nice. It's got a lot of space. It has a lot of natural light that comes in. And something really fun is once again, it's got these big radiators with a steam vent right here. And if we look out this window, we can see the original roof that's behind the new roof. So let's take a peek at that. So how cool is that? Let's go deeper into this house and explore more of it. So come back out here into the hallway and now we are heading into what was an addition into the house. So watch your step, there's a bit of a step down right here. There's a smaller, more compact radiator here in the hallway. And off to the side here, there's a pocket door that lets us into a newer bathroom in the house. Now this bathroom is probably still about 100 years old. And let's take a second to look at all of the intricate tile work in here. Looking around in this bathroom, we can see these beautiful porcelain details that are kind of embossed. So this is very three dimensional and everything is like lined up perfectly. So that's just one of those things that once again, isn't really replicated in modern times. So coming out of the bathroom, we're now walking into what was an addition to the house. And this now has hardwood floors. It has a crystal chandelier. It has windows on both sides of the room. And it also has this beautiful closet over here. And we can see that there are oversized baseboards that run along the footing of this room. So off in the corner of this bedroom is the second kitchen in the house. So once again, this was added at a later date. So watch our step. Um, there's a lot of steps that come down here. So the ceiling opens back up. There are newer cabinets, a newer sink, refrigerator. There's another compact radiator over there. And then there's actually a deck that comes off of the back of here. So opening this door, we can now get a really good shot of the backyard. So there is the old carriage house back here. And that is actually a two car garage today. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming on this tour with us. It has been so much fun to explore this house. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.